Why do you want to leave Babylon? There are many reasons that people want to leave the U.S., Babylon. But let's take a close look at what people's reasons or motives could be. You need to think about this. Are you leaving just to save your skin? Are you leaving because of the threat of martial law? Are you leaving because you don't want to get thrown in a concentration camp? You have to think hard and long about why. But what you really need to do is look at Yahweh's opinion of Babylon, the harlot. And the most important thing is that there has to be a change of heart before there is a change of land. Let's look at Yahweh's opinion of Babylon. In Revelation 19, it says, after these things, I heard a loud voice of a great multitude in heaven saying, Alleluia, salvation and glory and honor and power belong to Yahweh our Elohim. For true and righteous are his judgments, because he has judged the great harlot who corrupted the earth with her fornication, and he has avenged on her the blood of his servants shed by her. Again they said, Alleluia, her smoke rises up forever and ever. So we can see that the attitude of Yahweh and the heavenly hosts is one of praise. They praise Yahweh for the destruction of Babylon because it was such a terrible place. There's no regret. There's no sadness. Do you regret having to leave Babylon? Or do you have, can you see it the way Yahweh looks at it? A place that has deceived it, his people. A place that has corrupted the whole earth. He compares the country to a harlot, a prostitute. We need to have the same attitude. We need to understand why he looks at Babylon that way. If you don't look at it that way, then you need to study it. If you're just trying to escape to save your skin, to get away from concentration camps or for any other reason, it might not be enough. I've seen people leave the United States for those reasons, just to save their skin. And when things calm down, when there's no threat of martial law or concentration camps or an economic crisis, when things seem to be going well back in the U.S. and not so well wherever they are, Guess what happens? They go back. Exactly. And if you're going to leave to just go back, what's the point? You have to ask yourself, do you regret having to leave? Do you love America? Are you like Noah and Abraham looking forward? Or are you like Lot's wife looking back? That's why those those histories, those stories of those people's lives were written down. You need to study Lot and his wife and his family, Abraham, Noah, and what they went through. I mean, the Bible has many levels and many teachings, but read through them and read through the Exodus, because that's what this is too. This is your Exodus. Read what they went through, read their attitudes, and you need to study why Yahweh was upset with them and why he was asking them to leave. What was the purpose? Was it just an exercise? Just to do something? No, there's a purpose. Yahweh does nothing in vain. Everything has a purpose. It says in Matthew chapter 15 and verse 8, These people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Where is our heart? We have to have a change of heart before we have a change of land. Leaving Babylon, but not understanding why, and not leaving the system, will do nothing. That's why I agree with those people who say that Babylon is a system, and we need to come out of that system. Absolutely true. It's absolutely right. We need to come out of the system. Because if we don't, when you leave Babylon, 
you will just look for Babylon again somewhere else. Because right now, all the countries in the world are filled with sin. People are right when they say, what's the difference? What is China not worse than the United States? Is some other pagan country in the middle of Africa not worse than the United States or heathen country? No, you're right. They're all bad right now. The whole world is filled with evil. The difference is that many, many of Yahweh's people are in the U.S., many descendants of Israel. And I'm not talking only about Jews. I'm talking about all the tribes of Israel. Many descendants of Israel are in the U.S. and they don't even realize it. And they're greatly blessed. And yet their country is filled with sin. Those other countries don't have quite as many descendants of Israel. They have a few, but not as many. We've been given a great deal of blessings. And what have we done with them? And now Yahweh is warning. He's going to destroy that nation, just as he destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. But he's fair, and he gave Lot and his family a warning. He even sent angels to drag them out of there. Lot left, realizing that it was a sinful place. But his wife's heart stayed there, and she wanted to be back there. So she was turned into a pillar of salt. What is your attitude about Babylon? Let's look at the Exodus. Let's take a look at the Exodus. In, uh, because that's what you're doing. You're, you're leaving. This is your Exodus. Exodus 16 in verse 2. Then the whole congregation of the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the children of Israel said to them, Oh, that we had died by the hand of Yahweh in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the pots of meat, and when we ate bread to the full. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then Yahweh said to Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a certain quota every day, that I may test them whether they will walk in my law or not. And it shall be on the sixth day that they shall prepare what they bring in, and it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. So you see, these people had an attitude that they wanted to go back to Egypt after being rescued from Egypt which was being plagued, and it was where sin was. We know that Egypt represents our sinful life. We go through the Red Sea, which is our baptism. When you come through there, do you want to go back to your sinful life? Will you want to go back to the United States, back to Babylon, to have your pots filled with meat and your bread to the full? And Yahweh is teaching them how to keep the Sabbath, even before Sinai, when he gave the commandments. There's also a warning in Numbers 14 and verse 29. The carcasses of you who have complained against me shall fall in this wilderness, all of you who were numbered according to your entire number, from 20 years old and above, except for Caleb the son of Jephunneh and for Joshua. No means by shall no means enter the land which I swore I would make you dwell in. Again in Numbers 32.10 he repeats this that they would die in the wilderness, those who were 20 years old and above. They would not go into the promised land. The promised land for us is the kingdom. This is a warning to us. What kind of attitude do we have? Are we going to die in the kingdom? Or are we going to make it into Yahweh's... Are we going to die in the wilderness? Or are we going to make it into Yahweh's kingdom? This is our chance. This is our exodus. Just like all of the people of Yahweh have had to change their heart, change their mind, and make a physical move too. Not everything is a metaphor. Some things we actually physically have to do. You physically have to come out of Babylon. You spiritually and mentally have to come out of Babylon too. There must be a change of heart before there's a change of land. Study those scriptures and see the examples, the right examples and the wrong, exa wrong examples. Will you be like those people who died in the wilderness or will you be like Caleb and Joshua? There must be a change of heart before there's a change of land.